Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Dora, which is the tool that I've been talking to you about, which is extremely powerful. If you don't really know how power powerful it is, you can check out the first video in this playlist. Uh, but let's just go ahead and actually explore this tool. Once you sign up or sign in to Dora, you're gonna see something like this, which is pretty basic. Obviously right now it's uh, not really public, uh, but this is pretty much what you're gonna see. You can create a new project or you can go to a project that you wanna open. I'm gonna go to a blank project that I just created to explore things with you right now. Um, a few things that you're gonna notice right off the bat. We have the pages. At the top, I'm just gonna say basic intro. So this is gonna be our basic intro. We have pages on the left, we have layers at the bottom, we have components, we have data. We have two tabs at the top, which is going to our design and data. I'm gonna talk about data particularly afterwards, but basically data is just a database where you can store values similar to how you would store them in a CSV or on an Excel sheet or a Google sheet. And you can then use those values, whether those are images, text, any other elements in your designs to create, let's say, different types of elements like cards maybe, or products or something. At the top, you can see there are certain elements, like for example, a container, a text element, an input element, which is not available in Figma, an image, a list view, and a grid view. Now, what's really important about these things? Uh, a few important things that I'd just like to highlight at the top, uh, based on what I've seen up until now, if we just go here, you can see them as well. You can create a plus thing, you can add multiple elements to it, so on and so forth, but there's no way to create a style for now. You can create components, but there's no way to create a global style, which I think is really missing, which should be there. The other thing I'd like to highlight is there are no shapes right now, so you cannot create a shape. You don't have a vector tool right now in this tool as well, so you cannot create vector elements, but you can obviously import them if you've already created them in Figma or any other tool with an image. If you wanna include an image, that's fine as well. But those minor things are really missing. But apart from that, like Dora does really well in some of the additional capabilities it offers, uh, barring those things, those minor things that are really needed, I personally feel like when you're actually designing something, which are missing. So. First few things that I'd like to point out is you have the saved option at the top, which is similar to Figma. You have a keyframe panel. We're gonna have a separate video on the keyframes. You have how the page is gonna look on different devices, whether it's on desktop, MacBook Air, iPhone, whatever it is. It's basically not just a frame, rather it's gonna show how your exact page is gonna look like on these different screens. Uh, and we're just gonna quickly experiment with that as well. You have the zooming at the top. You can obviously zoom in by just pressing command plus minus, or you can just do that by pressing command and the scroll wheel. Then you have a play button that's gonna show you, similar to Figma, how the page actually looks. You have a publish button as well. You can click on it. You can see uh, where do you wanna publish it. Do you wanna publish it on, on a Dora domain or like Webflow, do you wanna connect a custom domain to it? Then you have some basic SEO options, which I think are, quite limited compared to uh, what we may have in WordPress or Webflow, but obviously they're starting out. Um, so from where they are right now, I think they're in a really good place. I'm gonna show you how to use these simple things immediately so you can uh, start playing around with them if you want. And then we're gonna cover a, a few advanced topics like constraints, keyframes, components, and databases later on. So with uh, starting out with the most basic thing, you have a container similar to a frame in Figma. You have the fill on the right, you have a visibility for the fill, you have the stroke on the right as well. You can decide what the stroke is gonna be, whether it should have a, a, a bigger stroke on the top or whatever or should be consistent. Then you have certain effects as well, like the shadow, inner shadow, layer, background blur. So basically the right panel is pretty similarly a copy of Figma, and I wouldn't necessarily say they've copied it, but it's a really great way of making people use their tool because if it was a completely different interface, it would be very hard to learn and people would have to learn it from scratch. So it's a good thing that it's similar to Figma or Sketch or any of the other tools. That's not a jab at them. The other thing that I wanna point out is obviously you can add text elements, like I can press T and I can add a text element. You can press uh, nothing because there's no shortcut for the input right now to add something here. You can decide what the placeholder is gonna be, what the content is gonna be, or whether it's gonna be fillable. Uh, you can add an image here and the image can be anything that you select or you've uploaded. I currently haven't uploaded an image so you don't see any image option here. 
Then you basically have a list. So a list can be added here. I can add anything on this first column or this first row and it's going to be duplicated in the list. Same goes for the grid. I can drag a grid and I can add anything to this first element. It's going to be repeated in all of the grid options. I can play it to show you how it looks. So we can quickly see it, but it's pretty going to be pretty simple to what you imagine it would be. Uh, it's just a pretty simple or an easy to use interface. And again, as you can see, this list, list view needs to be connected to data before it visible at runtime. So again, list views and grid views need to be connected to the database in order to be used, which is something that I feel may be slightly odd, but I think that's the right approach uh, because most of these most of this content is actually going to be not going to be generic rather it's actually going to be different it's not going to be the same so why don't you actually use the database option or the data option in the tool to actually connect it to something more dynamic so i think that's good similarly again it's pretty simple on the left hand side you can see all of the different uh, layers that you have you can see how this th thing is going to look like on different devices so on an iphone 8 obviously everything's out because i did not place them on the left or did not put constraints on them um, but yeah i mean that's pretty much it there's nothing really as complicated here you can obviously add more pages you can create components whatever it is you can do all of that stuff but in the next video is where the magic is going to start happening. We're going to be talking about constraints. Now, I know a lot of you may be thinking like, we really want to see the 3D stuff. We really want to see the animations and all of that stuff. But I have to tell you, I checked out their constraints and the constraint model that they have, which is very similar to what you may experience in Figma, though it's very different, but it allows you to achieve something very similar, is extremely powerful. It's even more powerful than what you see in Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch combined. If you combine all of these three tools, this constraint layout, in my opinion, is much more powerful than all of those three tools combined, all of their auto layout constraints and everything combined. And in the next video, we're going to be particularly tackling that. So stay tuned, do subscribe, do hit the like icon. I am going to reveal the invitation code shortly in maybe the next video or maybe the video after that. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.